Thanks for joining another Box CHQ session, a place where developers and security experts meet. Today, we're going to be talking about SSO and the value that it brings when you implement Box CHQ's SAML Jackson Enterprise SSO solution into your application. Now, what kind of benefits do you get with SSO? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at. You get things like improved security, increased productivity, centralized management, and cost savings. Not to mention that with SSO, users only have to remember one set of credentials across multiple applications. Now, this can reduce the risk of password-related security incidents. So to walk us through it, I have Ashwin with me, one of BoxyHQ's senior developers, to go through the setup and the configuration of getting SSO stood up in your environment. Let's get to it. Hey, Ashwin, how are you? Yeah, Nathan, I'm good, thank you. Awesome, we can get started whenever you're ready. So uh, for this walkthrough, I'll be showing a real SSO setup and uh, we'll see how we can configure SSO using Okta as the identity provider. Uh, I think I'll highlight the key points uh, related to SSO. One is that uh, with SSO, you get improved security. So ideally, your customers get to manage access control on their systems. Uh, you know, things like uh, enforcing password security and revoking access for certain users. It's everything within your customer's control. So that is one uh, main upside of implementing SSO. And also, it's like you are reducing cores, as in you don't have to maintain separate databases for keeping account information for each application. And also, it's like the upside is that the users get to have a better user experience. So they don't have to remember the credentials for different applications. They just have to create and log in once. And once they log in into a uh, SSO connected app, they're actually logged into multiple applications and it just uh, simplifies the overall user experience. We have a sample application, so it's a Next.js application, and we'll also get to see how the login experience works with a real, real world app. And after that, I will jump into some features that are related to SSO uh, that BoxyHQ provides. Yeah, so let's just uh, get to it. So Jackson is our single sign-on offering that helps you to uh, integrate with different identity providers so that you don't have to have custom integration for different IDPs. And we support both SAML and OIDC identity providers and you get to manage everything from a single service. So let me just uh, show you the setup. So uh, first I will be actually setting up the Jackson service. Uh, after that, we'll see how we can add a SSO connection. Uh, we'll also need some application setup on the Okta portal side. I'll be walking you through that. So let's jump right in. So uh, I have the Jackson repo cloned on my local machine. Let me just start by installing all the packages. So for that, I'll run npm run custom install. And for people who are actually curious, uh, you can just head over to our repo. It's actually boxhq slash Jackson. And this source code uh, is available for you. So you can jump right in. Keep a watch out for good first issues. Uh, so it's actually a good uh, place to start contributing to open source. Okay, so our packages are installed. Now, you know, to run Jackson, I need a database. So let me just uh, create a database. So for that, I'll just run npm run npms. So we provide this uh, NPM script that will actually create a set of databases. And for this demo, we'll be using Mongo. Let's just uh, create the Mongo database. Up and running. Okay, so we have the databases and these are the databases that we support. So whether it's MariaDB, MS SQL, MySQL, Postgres, and even DynamoDB. And we'll go with Mongo. And Ashwin, just make one small detail. You, uh, you have to be signed into Docker. Yeah. And when you spin up the databases, it spins them up in Docker. Yeah, correct. So uh, 
maybe you can have a local instance of mongo outside docker but it's much easier and since we provide a startup script for this it will be much easier to uh, run this particular script and it will spawn the container instance for you and okay. of course you need to have the docker desktop software installed on your system and and that is actually free to use great yeah so our database is ready let's just uh, and the first thing is that in order to run the Jackson service, we have some couple of uh, environment variables or settings that need to be configured. And let's just uh, do that first. So if you look into the repo, you'll see an example env file. Uh, what you can do is you can copy that file to env local file, and you can set the values uh, as required. So first is external URL. Um, external URL is the service endpoint at which Jackson uh, is accessible. And for us, since we are posting it on localhost or local machine, it's actually localhost 5225. And SAML audience. So this particular setting uh, is uh, same as the Jackson service provider NDT ID. And the same value needs to be configured in the identity provider side. This setting actually uh, sort of binds the two entities as in you have a Jackson service provider and you have the identity provider, the metadata matching actually happens on the back of this particular setting. And this should be a, uh, ideally we set it to a unique URL. So in this case, it's samlboxhq.com and the exact same value needs to be uh, configured in the application that you create on the IDP side. So next is uh, API keys. So Jackson has a couple of APIs that allow you to configure SSO connections and other features like directory sync. And those APIs are secured by means of API key. So you have to pass the API key in the authorization header and the value can be set uh, by this particular setting. So another important thing is uh, the DB engine. So in our case, it's Mongo and the DB URL is pointing to localhost. And let's just go with that uh, database, Jackson. Uh, so it will auto create the database. Uh, in this case, we have a fresh database instance and the database will be created for you. Uh, these are some default values as in uh, dbttl is something that is related to short live entities. So in the case of Jackson, uh, we use the over 2 point of flow and within the over 2 point of flow, we have some entities like authorization code, access token, and these are like short lead and the TTL for them is actually set to uh, five minutes or three, 300 seconds. And the other values are like the limit you actually keep on uh, the expired TTL entries. So uh, the DB cleanup limit of thousand means there is a cap on the number of items that will be cleaned up, items that are actually expired. So that is set to thousand. And this is something related to pagination and by default is set to 50. One key thing about hosting the Jackson service is that you will get the admin portal out of the box. So admin portal is kind of like the uh, UI or the gateway for configuring uh, the box HQ features. And for logging into the admin portal, we will actually set a uh, username password. So for this demo, let's just set it to bob at rateacme.com. Uh, and it's just a test user, test email. It's a dummy user and dummy email, dummy password. So that looks good. So let's just fire up the service. Uh, before that, we'll actually use a production build. And for that, I need to run npm run build. Fire up the server, npm run start. So the server is started and we can access it on localhost 5225. Let's head over to that. So uh, this is the admin portal. And here you see a number of uh, features that BoxHQ provides and Enterprise SSO is uh, one of them. Uh, the screen you actually see is where you add the SSO connection. We'll be adding a connection here. Uh, before that, we need to configure some things on the identity provider side. So we have Okta as the identity provider. So let's just head over to Okta. I have my admin account set up with Okta and I'll be going over to the app section. Go to the applications, create app integration, mm -hmm. choose the SAML 2.0 option here, click on next. Let's just give a SAML demo as the name. A couple of settings uh, that need to be set here. So one is a single sign on URL and this will point to the Jackson endpoint mm -hmm. and that is local host, 5.25. 
and this is the audience URI or the SP entity ID. So for that, we will copy the same setting that we set in the ENB. The name ID format should be email address. Advanced setting, let's just do it, go with unsigned. The attribute statements are kind of like mappings uh, that map the Okta user profile to a format that Jackson actually expects. Jackson expects the ID attribute and that should be mapped to user.id. First name, user.first name, last name, email. So uh, these steps are uh, well documented in our documentation. So if you head over to BoxyHQ, developers, docs, enterprise SSO, configure your SSO provider, head over to your identity provider. So it could be Azure, it could be Google. In our case, it's Okta. And you have these steps described here. So you can just follow through this uh, documentation. That is one nice thing I wanted to mention, Ashwin, is the docs are very detailed step-by-step. Step. It's yeah. really helpful. Yeah, yeah. And even if you don't find uh, something that is not there in the documentation, you can reach out to us in the Discord community channel. Let's just finish the setup. Okay, now we have our application ready on the IDP side. What we need to do is, uh, as a final step, we have to assign some users to this app. So for that, I'll be clicking on assign, assign to people. And uh, in this demo, I'll be logging in using my user. So I need to assign myself to the application. Save and go back. Okay, so uh, we have our app ready. Uh, and one thing that uh, we actually require from the IDP side is the XML metadata. So when we create the SSO connection, we'll be using the XML metadata and saving the metadata on the Jackson portal. So let's just head over to admin portal first. Let's create a new connection. So click on create new. In this case, it's a SAML connection. Let's give the name as the, and the important setting is tenant. Let's go with boxhq.com. We can keep the product as demo. And we have two settings which are related to uh, the application hosted endpoint. So as, uh, essentially what happens after single sign-on flow is that uh, Jackson redire redirects towards your application uh, using an authorization code. And we, are actually, and we need to specify the endpoint of the application here. So that acts as kind of like a uh, safeguard against open redirects. So it ensures that basically the user profile is not leaked to any malicious uh, websites. So basically it is your application hosted endpoint. So in our case, we have a demo app. Uh, I'll be showing it shortly. Uh, we are setting the redirect URL and another setting is that you have the default redirect URL. So this is uh, useful in cases uh, like the IDP uh, IDP initiated flow. Now, SAML has two different flows. One is the flow actually starts from the application side. So that means users head over to your application endpoint in the browser. They click on sign in with SAML and they are redirected to the IDP endpoint. So that is one flow. And the second flow is that you can actually go directly to the identity provider. Users can visit the portal or the dashboard for the identity provider. They can do a login and after successfully authenticating on the identity provider, they'll be redirected back to your application. So the default redirect URL for that is specified by this setting. And coming over to the IDP metadata. So we have two options. Either we can go with the original XML metadata or we can, we can actually point it to an endpoint that will provide you with the metadata. So you, you just have to configure either one of these. So we'll actually copy the XML from the Okta portal. For that, head over to the sign on tab. Click on new SAML setup. And this is the entire XML metadata. So just copy it and I'll be pasting it here. Let's just save the changes. And we have the connection set up here. Now, both the configurations are done, as in both on the Jackson side and the IDP side. Uh, now we can actually see a real login experience. We have an XJS application and let's just fire up that application. So we'll be logging in using Okta. Let's see how it works. And for this, uh, we have a examples repo. 
So here we actually showcase a couple of examples. So if you head over to github.com slash so here you get to see uh, integration with a couple of frameworks like Adonis, Express, and even with uh, uh, Firebase. So Firebase is a uh, service provided by Google uh, and frameworks like Asura. So you get to, you understand how this integration actually works with Jackson. And we'll be using the Nextdoor sample application. So we have it cloned it locally. First, let me install all the packages. And we have a application and a couple of ENVs need to be configured. So one is uh, the Jackson endpoint URL. So that is for us, it's actually on localhost 5225. Uh, these are a couple of next door ENVs. Uh, so it's like a secret that you can generate using the OpenSSL command. Uh, next door URL is the app endpoint. So our demo app will be running on port 3366. And we just configured the product as demo. So we will be given the same value here. So it's set to demo. And now let me just fire up the app. Taking a production build. Let me start the app. It's running on port 3366. Let's now try signing it with SAML SSO. So for that, I'll click on sign in. In this case, uh, we didn't actually see a uh, username password prompt. So uh, why that happened is because I already have a session with Okta. Uh, if I say, let's say I open the same endpoint in an incognito tab, I don't have the user signed in uh, with Okta. So I click on sign in with SAML SSO. And here you actually get to see the uh, login prompt. So basically I can show you in the same, I just do a sign out. Hello, doctor. I'll sign my user out. Okay, let's just try signing in again. And this time, I signed out of Okta portal. So it it is asking asking me for the credentials. I click on sign in. Yeah. So we are actually logged in. And uh, one use case or one scenario that uh, I would like to show you is that we have Okta configured for this app. And uh, another thing, another uh, setup that we support is for the same application, we can have multiple identity providers. So let me just head over to admin portal. I can add a new connection. So this time I'll be adding a mock identity provider. So Box HQ team has uh, created a mock SAML identity provider. So if you head over to mocksaml.com, so this is a mock identity provider and we'll be uh, adding an SSO connection for this. So let's just Name it as XAML. And for a lot of use cases, the mock XAML is perfect for testing your application to get your SSO up and running, which is why the Boxy HQ team built it so that you have something just out of the box that you can quickly test. Yeah, absolutely. And since I will be trying to log in using the same application, the product that it does demo. So mock XAML exposes a metadata URL. If I click on metadata URL, I can just copy the endpoint and instead of pasting the whole metadata, I can just provide the URL to access the metadata. Like the on save. Okay, so now we have two SSO connections configured against the same product, uh, same application. And let's just see how that login experience looks like. So let me open an incognito tab, click on sign in. Now, what you see over here is the identity provider selection page. So we are providing the user with a choice to log in with either Okta or with Moxamal. And the user has to choose one out of these. And this is a, a UI that they will be seeing. Let's just see how it actually, let's just try to log in with Moxamal. I know. I'm signed in. So, this is one setup that we support where we uh, can have multiple identity providers configured against the same application. Now, if I head over to the admin portal, uh, there are a few other features that uh, are related to SSO. So one is setup links. So we have the use case where uh, users who don't have admin access to the portal need to configure SSO connections. This actually uh, addresses that particular use case. 
uh, let's see how it actually works. Okay, perfect. That's what I was going to ask you. Okay. So I head over to setup links. I create a new setup link. Let's just say product, name demo, and then that's boxhtable.com, portrait direction, or anything. So uh, these are some settings, uh, as in the tenant and product need to be configured, uh, plus the redirect URL of the application. And if you click on generate, so what you see over here is a new uh, unique link. Uh, it's kind of like a uh, public link. So anyone can access the link. To, in order to safeguard the link, we have some kind of expiry. So in this case, uh, uh, the validity is until May 15th. So it's actually a short-lived link in that sense. Since anyone can log in using, anyone can actually access the link uh, without any kind of authentication. Uh, so we have this kind of expiry uh, set to the particular link. So what admins will do is they will actually copy the link from here and they will share it with the customer. And if I access the link, so we can see that we created the link for the product demo and we already have two SSO connections configured uh, against the same product and again we can create add multiple connections so the customer can either go with SAML or OADC uh, and the cool thing is uh, they don't need to have any kind of admin privileges so in a way uh, uh, that helps to uh, reduce the back and forth that happens between the administrator and the non-admin user so sort of simpl simplifies the experience that way. Okay, nice. Going over that is super helpful. Just hearing the context of all the different use cases between admins, the customers, employees, those who wouldn't have access to the admin portal. So we support all of that out of the box with the Jackson service and the admin portal. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. What happens if I get an error? How can I debug and try and trace the error back to uh, my connection or misconfiguration? Yeah. Okay. So the challenge with SAML is that the uh, it's hard to uh, debug the errors. So any error could happen during the SAML request, uh, or it could happen uh, during the SAML response phases. So we need some kind of tracing or logging. Uh, to get the context uh, and which will help troubleshoot the error. So for that, we have a feature called SAML Tracer. So I can show you an example of how that actually works. Okay, so let me head over to the application. In the Next.js application demo app we have, we have an option to log in with OIDC. To explain a bit on that, it's like, uh, so Jackson supports two flavors. Uh, one is over two point of flow and another uh, another one is open ID connect flows. So all the client side libraries nowadays actually support both flows. The difference is that with the OIDC flow, we actually get an ID token back. So uh, let me just try to log in with OIDC flow and let's see how, uh, what really happens when I do that. So here we actually received an error and I am not able to log in. If I just try again, this time I open the browser inspect window. I try sign in again. Let's try with Okta. Again, we see the error. And if we inspect the error within the network, So you see the uh, redirection happening back to your application. And if you inspect the payload, you see the error description. And what you see over here is a trace ID. It's like a unique ID uh, that you can share with the administrator. So in this case, it's red or below 10 is, I just copy the value. If I head over to admin portal, I see the exact trace being uh, listed here. And if I click on the trace, so this is the one I actually, so in the network tab and the application will get to know this ID and I can share it with the administrator. And once I identify the trace, I can actually get the full context behind that error. So it will help me to troubleshoot it quickly. So in this case, the OAuth server was not configured for OpenID flow. That's why uh, we were not able to log in and you will get the full context here. So this sort of uh, helps all of us in troubleshooting any errors that happens anywhere in the flow. So that is one feature we actually provide. Definitely, super helpful. Yeah. So 
to sum up the configuration that uh, needs to be done uh, in order to integrate Okta identity provider. So we set up an SSO connection, we set up the application on the IDP side, and we save the metadata, and we try to log in using uh, NXJS application. And we also saw the scenario where we have multiple identity providers configured for the same app, uh, and we saw the IDP selection screen uh, where the user was actually presented with a choice to go with a particular identity provider. Also, uh, we saw the setup link feature that helps non-admin users to set up SSO connection. Finally, we saw the SAML tracer functionality. So that essentially helps you to troubleshoot SAML errors that happen in the flow. That pretty much sums up the overall setup. So thank you. That's it from my end. All right, Ashwin, this walkthrough has been super helpful. I know setting up SSO can be extremely complicated. So going over setup configuration, what the environmental variables do is extremely helpful in getting the context of what's happening on the back end. So yeah. thank you very much.